Well, stuck in my throat. Right, this was uh, this is another single we did just before we made our our, our big record deal, a big deal. Uh, yeah, we, this is a, a recording. This song was on the first album, but this is a, a, a first recording we did of it, so it's a different recording. Uh, yeah, we filmed this in a like a horrible shed uh, next to where we recorded the album in Chobham. And I remember uh, John, who did the bass playing, when he like, finished all his bass tracks, he went off to just, he spent the whole day sweeping it out because it had some stuff in it. Like, I think it was used for artificially inseminating cows. Very bad news. And we got my friend Daniel to act in it, and he acts being asleep very, very well. And we had to put uh, eye things in to make our eyes scary. And uh, to be honest, this video didn't really go the way I wanted it. I had lots of different ideas about what it would do, and it didn't really tell the story that I wanted it to tell. But I think it's still an effective video, and I really like the track. Again, we did this with uh, Dan Fernback. Really nice, here it is, stuck in my throat. Don't change the channel or your mum will break her back. It's like stepping on a crack, but more worse. So, right, this is uh, Freddy Cougar. This is the first single we did off our album proper. Uh, back in the day when I had to stick on a moustache, as you can see nowadays, that is not the case. But uh, this is a song, it's about uh, how being in a band is quite tough, because it's taken us quite a long time to get signed. And so that's really what was on my mind at the time, and everyone... Uh, they like the song, but they're like, it's a bit whiny, and I was like, get out. And so we released it as a single, and we did this funny video where everyone's wearing moustaches. It's a bit like the 118 adverts. But don't tell no one. No one will notice. And there's red skeletons in it. And uh, if you look at the bit in the record shop where the kids go in to get their refunds and all the rubbish Ruben albums, that's my brother with a moustache on there claiming a refund for my album. So thanks a lot, Jezbo. And uh, interesting little story about this. We did a little showcase for a man called Bob Ezrin, who produced Pink Floyd's The Wall, or I don't know, some stuff like that. Who is he? Anyway, and we played him this song, and he went, I tell you what, guys, that's a beautiful, beautiful song, but it don't belong in this band. So, Bob Ezrin, where are you now? Rich and famous. Okay, let's roll Freddy Krueger. Oh, moving to Blackwater. So, um, often what happened in Reuben was that none of us could decide on anything, and then instead of like going with one of the options that we all thought was good, in order so no one got their way, we'd just go for a bad option. Uh, and that's what happened with this single. We thought, let's release a really good single, and then no one could agree, so we just released this bad choice of a single. Uh, but uh, it's one of my favourite songs. It's off the first album, uh, Race Cars, Race Car Backwards. I was really pleased with it, especially the strings at the end. I thought they were very nice. And we went down to Brighton because we were a bit fed up of, of miming for videos. And miming for videos isn't very fun. You've got to do it again and again. And, and the director goes, great. But this time with more rock out and you rock out more. And he goes, fantastic. But this time with more rock out and you cut your face open. And he goes, all right. But this time with more rock out. and you. Whoa. So we thought, let's do a video where we don't play at all. And I thought that was quite a neat idea. We all were quite pleased with that. And we thought we'd make it more like a little movie. And again, directed with Dan Furback, lovely fella from, from Farnham, where we're from. We went down to Brighton with actors. We've got two real actors. Um, Merrin, who plays the boy, he was in Callan the Girls. And he was in uh, Billy Elliot, imagine that. And the lady, Sophia, I can't remember what she'd been in. Uh, probably lots of boys' dreams from the look of it, because she's a nice looking lady. And they were both very nice. We had a makeup girl. It was all going on. And uh, I was really pleased with this one because I want it to be quite scary and what happens at the end when his girlfriend calls up but she's in the same place as him and it's a weird doppelganger, David Lynch type moment and no one got it and everyone's like, what's the big deal? His sister calls up. And I was like, it's not her sister, it's the same girl. He's freaking out. Anyway, this is one of my favourite videos and one of my favourite songs, Moving to Blackwater. Check it out. Okay, so now we're moving on to when we did our second album, Very Fast, Very Dangerous. We did, this is the first single off it, Blame Thrower, and we wanted to do just a we back type thing. So we just did a little download single, even though it hadn't taken that long between the last single and this one. Anyway, so we put Blame Thrower out, just download only, and we botched together a video quick. And in fact, we were still in, we were still in the studio mixing the whole album when we heard the single Blame Thrower on Radio 1. So that was nice. And uh, we, we did the video... 
I wanted to do it in colour, but everyone else said, let's do it in black and white. And I think it worked well. I didn't want to go back to black and white. But I think it worked really well, especially with the when we changed, we were wearing all black one minute and then all white the next minute. And I had a lot of graphics to go in it, like that funny hand at the start. But uh, they didn't end up in their final cut. Never mind, you can see it a bit. Uh, my friend Vincent put a lot of work into that. He was annoyed when it got cut out. He punched me in the face. And uh, so, yeah, I think this is a good video. Uh, see what you think. Blame thrower. Let's have it. Mm -hmm.